foes vying for this championship title here in Norfolk, Virginia. And like you just said, Christy, two guards, very talented, similar in stature, but excited to have a chance at this championship today. Absolutely. You see Norfolk State starting out in a 3-2 zone, and, and that is what Ty Grace was waiting for. She knew. She's like, they played us in zone both games. We just have to be able to move the basketball, get it to the second and third sides, and try to attack the paint as Norfolk State took that option away from them. Spartans working the ball around the floor, being patient. Hey, we've really got to do a good job on the interior with our defense. They try to get downhill. You see Diamond Johnson right there trying to get in there. They have a shot clock violation. Their defense, another 1-2-2. Two, two. Defense set up by Norfolk State as well. Creek for three. It's short. She docked down a couple in yesterday's semifinal game. Yeah, just didn't seem to have her legs on that one, but she said, I'm here to do whatever the team needs for me to do, and she came out and hit three threes in yesterday's win. Fields goes downhill, and she puts the Spartans on the board. Warren, she gets down, and it's short, but we talked about it, those offensive rebounds, two in a row, and Niall Miller, the sophomore from New Jersey, Wheeler down low. They sent two on her. Yep, as they should. As they should. Not going to be easy down in there. Ty Gray said, we got to make it difficult. Every shot needs to be contested, especially for Wheeler. Well, Fields is able to pick it off from the Bison, and Diamond Johnson misses the layup. But there to clean it up, it's Anasia Williams. Tiana Walker is unable to get it to go. But the Spartans pushing the pace. Fields finds Johnson. Debrier Clark. Ten on the shot clock now for the Spartans. Wheeler. And that's her move, Christy. Oh, she's wheeling and dealing down inside Wheeler. That's why she was named MIAC Player of the Year. Individually covered. She's going to go to work by maintaining her contact on that seal and finishing nicely in there. Nia Fields pushing the pace once again. The Spartans love to get out in transition. And Debrea Clark with the three from the corner. Creek at the free throw line. And it's denied by who? Kiara Wheeler working down in the trenches. The big block. Fields finds Wheeler. To Wheeler once again down low she takes her time and this time she helps the Spartans go on a 9-0 run well that time we were talking about on the previous time she scored she was individually covered that time she had two and a half players on her and it didn't matter either she's a worker down in there Miller finds Warren Ayana Warren Walker to Creek And the easy buddy's made by Niall Miller. And that's what Howard needs to do, right? Massage the defense down. Get it to the second and third sides. Make them work and then attack. Less than 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Debrea Clark, she's thinking about it. Finds Fields. And Ayana off to the races. Creek. She's there to finish it. Howard has benefited from their persistence on the offensive glass. That's twice they've scored on offensive rebounds. Well, the score right now is 11-6 to six in favor of Norfolk State. The energy and the excitement is here for college basketball, so don't go anywhere because we have the
he's poured into them by encouraging them outside of basketball, and that's where the lifelong impact will be felt for years to come. And she's a former player, played at University of New Haven. She's in the Hall of Fame, just like you are. <laughs> she's one of only two players to score a thousand points and a thousand rebounds. Well, she's tough, and that's what she said yesterday in the post-game presser. She said, "I mean, I played hard, and that's how I want my teams to play." And you've seen the dogged attention to detail to get them to this championship opportunity. This is the fourth time in a row that Howard University has been to the championship game. We talked about it last season. Norfolk State won it, so they are the reigning champions. But Howard has made it their business to get here to these moments. Now you see Howard in their 2-3 zone. They did a little bit of this yesterday against Coppin. And a nice mid-range jumper made by Danasia Williams. And both teams going with zone to be able to enforce that. Harris finds Warren. Warren will head to the line. Yeah. Get to the hip and attack. You can't reach in the cookie jar and try to get that. She's by you and not the player that you want to foul. Currently ranked number one in the conference in free throw percentage at 81%. The lefty. She is just so smooth with it. It's so tempting to try to get to the player before the ball reaches them. But you're going to be first to the ball if you cut that route short and get that outside hand in the passing lane and tip it. Richards finds Fields. The ball moving around the arc. Five seconds on the shot clock. Richards will pull the three, and it's good for the Spartans. Executed to perfection with the skip pass for the triple. And that's how you break a zone down as well. Everyone thinks... You know, you, you try to shoot it out, and that is possible, but it's the passes that break the defense down, regardless of the shot. Richards thought about another one. And a beautiful pass down low to Paris Mullins. Paris Mullins, great hands down inside. That doesn't go away. I'm sorry. Like, every March that comes around, I remember losing in the Final Four, and it's not a good feeling every year. Well, Ayanna Warren trying to change the trajectory of this game. And she can do that. I mean, she applies so much pressure, whether she's putting the ball on the deck and attacking or yanking a three ball in someone's eye as well. Williams back to Johnson. Johnson finds Wheeler. Rebounded by Walker. Wheeler's not going to miss many of those down in there. I mean, Howard's done such a great job of trying to squeeze her space. Everybody was screaming shark in the water. <laughs> Diamond Johnson I had somebody swimming behind her. Entire crowd here at the scope and let her know about it. Johnson did not seem worried at all. <laughs> She's been in games like this before. Her team went to the Elite Eight when she was at North NC State. When you have players that bring that experience, because of the transfer portal, you're seeing more kids have that experience. But she's showing and proving the same thing today in the championship game. Definitely. Johnson turning the corner, and she'll flip it up. Wheeler cleans it up. Warren. Beating the pressure, gives it to Walker. Warren for three, and it's good, Christy. She's just so tough. She was able to bring this game back within two. Fields to Wheeler. Wheeler trying to wheel her way down the paint, and she's fouled. Fields finds Wheeler. She can't get it to go. And the halftime buzzer has sounded. Grab your snacks and settle in because the second half is about to unfold. But it's the big against the little in this one. And I'm not talking about the outside. And I'm telling you, these players are ready to play. And those two will be key for each of their respective ball clubs. Well, you hit it on the nose. The players are geared up and we're set to resume this intense battle on the court. Fields finds Diamond Johnson still scoreless in this game.
Well, what Diamond Johnson cannot do is settle for outside shots, right? And we were just talking about the importance of attacking the painted area, even if you draw contact and get yourself to the line. Because sometimes, as you know, you see the shot fall. Even if it's from the foul line, you get your rhythm back. And she's kind of forcing the issue right now. She's got to get herself downhill. And this is the matchup I wanted to see. I said this yesterday. I want to see Warren and Johnson go for it. Well, she did exactly what the doctor Warren finds Creek. Nice kick, though. Baseline drive. And Niall Miller is foul. She's so active. She goes up with two high hands every single time. I mean, you never see her grow up with one hand on the rebound. And only a sophomore, so she has plenty of time to grow. Started in 12 games as a freshman. Credit, again, Howard's defense. Just trying to bottle them up in the paint. Again, getting a piece of that one on a block against this pressure. 1-2-2, two, two, both teams almost very similar with what they've been doing defensively. Except Howard's zone has been 2-3. Norfolk State, they've applied their 3-2. That's it. Attack the elbow. There you go. And that's what you have to do, right? And it's, it's no mystery. And where they rotate to. It allow you to breathe and get comfortable. For sure, get your confidence back. You know, you, you put in all that work in the summer, you're standing on that free throw line in the gym by yourself in a hot gym. Make that pay off for you. you stick your free throws. And again, Norfolk State, zero free throw attempts in that first half. They need to change that as well. Get some offensive production with Johnson and Wheeler well below their averages so far. Johnson, she'll pull it. And it's up and in. This has turned into a very fast-paced game. Yeah. A couple of quick shots there, and by both teams, really. Both teams have really done a good job of staying poised and composed. The last couple of shots, just really trying to hurry up and score. Take your time. Work the defense down. Both teams averaging over 60 points per game, so obviously knowing that first half was very low scoring. Johnson trying to get down into the paint. And she's fouled. And that's what Norfolk State needs from their experienced guard. And she played at Rutgers to start her career and then went to the Elite Eight with North Carolina State. And chose to come to Norfolk State to continue to try for another championship for this team. Well, using that strength that you talked about, currently Johnson... 82% free throw shooter. Only went to the line 44 times this season, though. And she shoots a lot of threes. I mean, she was 6 of 11 from three yesterday for her 30 points. But she also had 11 rebounds. So she's a worker B. She's not just a perimeter, scared of getting touched up. She wants all that smoke. You see the hustle right here by both teams. They know, you know, that's what you work for. That's what you strive for. That's what you break every huddle for with that intentionality to advance in the postseason. We saw a couple of tears during post, post games, presser, because this is a one big conference. So like you just said, Christy, the winner of this game definitely gets a berth. Uh-oh. Things getting a little chippy. Howard with five team fouls. So any foul in this quarter from now until the end of it, Norfolk State will be shooting free throws, and that could be an impactful situation and a tough sequence for Howard if Norfolk State can capitalize from it. Well, Kiara Wheeler coming right out of that timeout with vengeance, ready to put the team on her back. Well, we get the possession, and now they're playing with a little more fire in the belly. You see those hands a little higher on defense for Norfolk State. Wheeler controls the board. Richard, she's going to pull it out. Diamond Johnson will pull the three in the face of Kiara Creek. Norfolk State now with their largest lead. Looking to cut it. Wheeler, she drives. And she just makes it look so easy, Christy. Well, she just flipped that thing up. Almost like she shot that from her wrist, but had a good backspin on it. It's her 14th double-double this season for Wheeler. 
Warren. In a familiar face to that free throw line, she heads there once again. Ayanna Warren currently leading all Bison scores with 12 points, looking to add more to that number. Make that 13. Well, she's just as tough as they come. I love her game, and I told her as much yesterday. You know, she just means so much for this team in terms of the mentality that is necessary to compete and win. Without Destiny Howe, preseason player of the year, everyone had to step up. And the Howard Bison have been able to do just that. Hemingway gives it to Creek. Vanessa Blake currently a 72% free throw shooter. Played in 31 games at Radford last season. And that's her first bucket of the game. Right, Howard did a really great job in that first half. Not allowing Wheeler and Johnson to get into a rhythm. Now Johnson has found her rhythm on the offensive side with eight points so far here in the third. They've gotten a lot of steals and gotten a lot of deflections. Trying to blow up plays that Norfolk State has been trying to execute. Clark in the corner. It's in and out and there'll be a foul call. Wheeler now with 13 points. Four for four from the free throw line now. Make that five for five. And just a one possession game. Just over two minutes to go here in the third. And Norfolk State breaks the pressure once again with the zigzag attack. Passes only. And that's how you do it. You don't want to dribble against the press. And that's how you get hemmed in. Johnson hits the back of the iron and there'll be a foul on the floor. If there's a displacement that occurs before that, which did happen there. So why Norfolk State is headed to the line. Wheeler currently a 71% free throw shooter. She's gone to the line more than anyone in the MIAC conference. Johnson for three. Hits the front of the iron. And Kanaya Harris will head to the line. Harris makes her first, a 65% free throw shooter. And she makes both free throws. And March Madness. But who's going to make the final surge? That has yet to be discovered. Risky pass by the Spartans. is picked off by the Bison. Warren shoots and scores. She got that one to go. She just gets so high off the ground at 5-3. She really makes an High impact on shots inside. Clark. It's swatted away by Hemingway. And Warren has scored 10 points in this quarter alone. 11 to 1 run right now by the Bison. Put herself on the board. Less than 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ball in the hands of Diamond Johnson, one of their leaders. Richardson, she pulls the three. And the Howard University Bison have their first lead in the act tournament. They were out here when the confetti was falling over their brethren. So they want to do it themselves and bring it back to the Mecca. Well, Howard currently having their first lead of this game. And Ayana Warren extending that lead. Clark taking the ball out, finds Wheeler. Wheeler can't get the layup to go, but she finishes her own miss. The Bison working the ball around the arc. 
Walker. And it's picked off by Diamond Johnson. It's a 1 4 line set up on the out of bounds under. You want to lift that lane line player up, which they did with Wheeler. Less than 10 to go on the shot clock. Oh. And Kiara Wheeler making something out of nothing. That's lemonade, the cool, refreshing drink right there. The lemon. Creek from the top of the key. And it's good. Forty-one thirty-seven in favor of the Bison. Big time bucket for the Bison. Johnson and Wheeler. Those two. Warren finding Creek. Diamond Johnson plucked that ball away from Warren. Nia Fields doesn't use the screen. They find Kiara Wheeler. Wheeler on three players. Scores yet again. That's 19 points for Kiara Wheeler. Less than six minutes to go. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Kaya Creek hits the front of the rim. Gabriel Clark controls the board for the Spartans. Clark. Wheeler with the rebound. And she heads to the free throw line. You just mentioned it. That's 15 rebounds for Kiara Wheeler. Mm. Her new season high. Nine for 20 from the floor. The last six she has been inside. Warren threading the needle. It's batted away by the Spartans. I don't think she was trying to shoot that. You see Warren coming up the floor, clapping her hands like, oh, we needed that possession. You got to get it back on defense, though. Still a lot of time left here. Fields. Kilter shot. Sky Robinson gets the rebound. Diamond Johnson for three. And the entire building erupts here. You can feel the energy in here, Christy. And that's Nia Fields' fifth foul. And if Diamond Johnson was a freshman, I'd say, oh, that's a concern. But I, I'm not really concerned about Fields being out right now because Diamond Johnson can handle the moment. Diamond Johnson has been stepping up to the plate. But so has Kaya Creek. Johnson using Wheeler's screen. Sky Robinson. It's off the back. But Debria Clark. We talked about those offensive rebounds. Sky Robinson can't get the short corner shot to go. Yeah, we were talking about turnovers and rebounds being major keys for both teams. And those second chance opportunities coming up huge. Walker finds Creek. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Gabriel Clark with a huge steal. Takes it all the way and she's fouled. Debria Clark currently with three points. The freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. And she makes the free throw. One possession game with a minute to go. This is what you love about March Madness. Less than two minutes to go in this game. Here in Norfolk, Virginia, Ayanna Warren. Finds Kaya Creek. Nice patience by Howard. They're out of go now, though. Warren 
Hits the back of the iron, but Vanessa Blake with the huge offensive board and finish. Major finish inside for Blake. Two high hands like a baby bird just got that one. Johnson finds Clark. Diamond Johnson finding Debria Clark. Five seconds on the shot clock. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. Harris finds Warren. Less than one minute to go. See, they're being patient. Mm. And Marissa Steele throws it away. One minute to go. And we have a one-point game. 2-2-1 two, two, pressed by Howard. This time they have been in a 1-2-2. Two, two. Diamond Johnson choreographing her team right now. They jump the ball screen with Wheeler and Johnson. And Wheeler... It goes in and out. The ball will stay in the hands of the Spartans. And they will take a look at that because they're under the two minutes. And that's a reviewable play. Aware of a blitz coming her way, a double team coming her way. It's a force action, but here we go. Hemingway. They find Creek. No foul called. Sky Robinson grabs the rebound. There seems to be some confusion. Coach Vickers jumped up off the ground over there when the foul was called. Here we take a look right here. Enter it right at that high post area. And Warren, yeah, got a little piece of the body. Nine point five seconds to go in your 2024 MEAC basketball tournament here in Norfolk, Virginia. Ooh, it's close to a travel. That was close to a travel. Diamond Johnson currently one for two from the free throw line. And she misses the first, Christy. Oh. Now, if you're Howard, don't you dare let Wheeler get in there and crash this glass. Box out. But she makes the second. Kanaya Harris taking the ball out on the side. Finds Kaya Creek. Oh. Hemingway oh. pushes it up. It's no good. And Debria Clark is fouled. Right here, you see the slip down the lane line and just came up short and wanted some contact and saw the Howard bench disgruntled by the no whistle there. But you can't be leaning away in moments like that. You've got to go straight to the action and get to the chest and finish. And Norfolk State gets the rebound. Point three seconds. We talked about those offensive rebounds. Defense wins games. Rebounds win championships. Win. Oh, and nine over the stretch during the season this year. And kudos to their seniors. Denasia Williams makes her free throw. The fans are off their seats. And Norfolk State University Lady Spartans are your 2024 MEAC Basketball Tournament Champions.